Hello everyone, this is Felix from Chairmorph. Today we're going to have an in-depth look at arrays and how we can use them inside Game Maker Studio 2. So first of all, let's have a look at what are arrays. Well, in a way, they're a group of values and they are ordered. Uh, so on the right, you can see an example of what an array may uh, be represented as. So uh, you have a table and on the left, you have indices and on the right, you have values. Now it's important to see that indices are all in order and you start off at index zero and go up to the length minus one. So here we have uh, at index zero, we have the value of 42. And then at index one, we have a string foo. At index two, which is the third value, we have the number four. And finally at index three, we see that we have a um, and another array with values one, two, and five. So what's important to notice here is that we can really have any kind of value stored in arrays and they're all in sequence. Another way to think about arrays is that are mapping from indices to values. So let's have a look at how we can work with arrays in GameMaker Studio. So first of all, let's have a look at how we can access them, that is setting and getting values. First, let's have a look at reading the values. So on the right, we can assume we have a array inside a variable named array. And if we wanted to get the first number from it, we can simply use the square bracket notation. So we have array square bracket zero close square brackets, which can be read at array at position zero. Below, we see how we can do the exact same thing with another position. So we can say number one equals array at position one. Assigning values is quite similar. You can say array at position zero equals 42. And similarly, you could say array at position one equals 24. Finally, let's have a look at how we can get the size of an array. And that is done using the function array length 1D. And you pass in the array. This will return the size of your array. Now, the 1D here is because you can also get array length 2D uh, which is used for 2D arrays. However, I'm not going to cover them in this tutorial since they're really occasionally used. Grids are actually used more often in some situations when 2D arrays may seem like the solution. Now let's have a look at how you can create arrays because there's no point being able to access your arrays if you can't create them. But actually, uh, the first way to create your arrays is actually to assign values to them. Uh, so you can see on the right, you have this piece of code, which would actually create an array in the variable named array simply by assigning values to one. The next way is to use array literals, which were introduced in GameMaker Studio 2. And you can use a square bracket notation followed by some values, which uh, help you create complex arrays in a single line. So let's have a look at array references now, because they are a core uh, parts of how uh, of how arrays behave. So first of all, we need to realize that arrays point to data. By that, I mean that if you say var a equals uh, the array 0, 1, 2, the value isn't actually stored in the array. Rather, a now points to a uh, to to the value instead. So rather than a being the value instead and being the value itself, it points to the value. This means that if you say var b equals a, now b also points to the very same array, meaning that if you modify the, var the array b by saying, for instance, b at 0 equals 5, now a at 0 will also be equal to 5 because they both point to the same array. They are both the same reference. So let's have a look at passing those references around in scripts because things get a little bit weird. First of all, we need to realize that we can totally pass arrays into our functions. So let's have a look at our script here we create in the green box. We have a script named get element, which takes the array variable. And all it does is return the first element in the array. And if we have a look below that, we see that we can create an array like usual and then get our script get element, which should return the first element. And it all seems to be working. However, things get a little bit weird with copy on write. That is to say that if we write to, a, to an array inside a script, 
it will actually copy the reference and co copy the array and create a new reference, meaning that we're not modifying the original array. And as you can see here, we have a script called increment, which will increment the first element in the array by one. And if we have a look at the example usage below, we create an array with the first element of 42. And if we call increment on the array and then try to get the first element of that array, we still get 42. The value didn't seem to be incremented. And once again, that's because there is the copy on write mechanic, which makes uh, the array be copied in the memory and a new reference is formed just for that script. So you may wonder uh, how you remedy that, and that is by using accessors. So here we have the add accessor or the array accessor, which is the little add symbol. So if we have a look at our new modified increment script, we now have the add symbol inside the square brackets. And now if we have a look at the example usage below, it is exactly the same. So once again, we start with an array with the first element being 42. And if we increment it, the array, and then get the first element again, it is now 43. So our script works as intended. So when using the at accessor, we're no longer using copy on write, it is modifying the array directly, which can be very useful in situations where you want to pass your scripts around. So when can you actually use arrays and what are they good for? So you can use them as ordered lists, which is great for high scores or maybe an inventory system. They're also capable of being used as sets of values. So maybe you want a group of enemies where the order doesn't really matter, or maybe a set of possible moves where you just want to tell the player what he can do. Uh, finally, you can also use them as structures. An example of that would be vectors where you may have one or two values inside your array and uh, player stats, maybe you have its health and so on. In fact, using them as structures is an incredibly powerful tool in Game Maker Studio, and I made another video about it, which I highly recommend you go check out. It explains everything about structs and how you can create them in Game Maker in different ways. And as you will see, I conclude that using arrays is uh, potentially the best option we have. So that is it for this video, guys. Thanks so much for watching. If you find this video useful, please give it a like. And if you'd like to see more, subscribe. The comments below are where you can ask uh, any question about either arrays or any other programming questions you may have. And I'll see you guys next time for some more Game Maker tutorials.